Michael here with Eternal Kingdom Mushrooms and today we're going to take a look at harvesting our spores or spore collection after we've harvested our mushrooms. And so we have a flush here that we freshly harvested from our mycelium cake out of the shroom box and we're going to go ahead and set aside a few of the choice uh, the more pretty mushrooms. I like to pick ones that I like for their genes uh, and we're going to just pull the caps from the stem uh, and set those aside here so that we can uh, allow these caps to start start dropping spores. Now you'll have to remember each mushroom it produces millions of spores and they're constantly falling once that veil has broken from the stem and the gills have separated. They're just going to be constantly dropping spores and so we're just going to set our, our, um, our mushroom tops here face down on our tray and you can see just like that they're going to start uh, developing spores. Now we've made sure we have a clean surface, a sterile surface where we've covered these um, as some people use a laboratory hood, there's other uh, devices and equipment out there. Uh, I've, I have others my own, um, but you can simply take a, a cup or a bowl and cover the top of your mushrooms after you've set them face down. Uh, just like this, you can see here, uh, we have the bowl covering the caps, and at that point, uh, we know nothing's going to come in and contaminate this surface where we've placed these uh, and, and so when we collect our spores using our sterile syringe uh, we can trust that we don't have the likelihood that contamination has come into this process is, is slim or minimal um, and there's ways again that you can increase uh, the, the sterility of your process um, but I think this is fine for most folks at home so again, just uh, covering your spores uh, and working again in a, in a sterile area uh, where those can uh, safely drop. Uh, this will, again will take about 24 hours, so we'll come back in, in 24 to 48 hours to take a look at how, uh, how our spores are doing and if they're ready to transfer into our syringe. All right, guys, welcome back. Now our spores have been uh, slowly gathering uh, for the last 24 hours. We've had caps down and uh, they've been dropping spores onto our stainless steel catch tray here and uh, as you can see we're working with a still air box uh, this is just to prevent contamination from coming into uh, the area we're working with other folks like to use a laboratory hood uh, or simply work in a very sterile or clean environment at home but i will caution that if contamination is going to come into your process at any point most likely it's going to be improperly gathering or collecting spores or not collecting them in a sterile enough environment. And so uh, this stage in the process, we really want to uh, emphasize the importance of, of a sterile environment where we're working and gathering our spores. So I'm uh, just going to slide our hands into the still air box. This gives us a working area where we can go ahead and work with our, our stainless steel tray here. Inside of our box, we've got uh, our disposable syringes that we're going to use to collect uh, spores and then I also like to keep a few uh, sterile razor blades brand new razor blades and this just allows me to move the spores around uh, as I'm collecting them again we also have distilled water and the reason why uh, we use uh, distilled water is any other water whether purified bottled water uh, or any other tap water, it's, it's just not going to work. It's going to introduce and contaminants into your process and ultimately result in a bad outcome for your spore collection. So make sure that you use distilled water at this part of the process. So we're just going to reach in and set aside. We've got a few of our caps here. We're going to take them and remove them from our stainless steel tray here. And you can see uh, what's been left behind are these beautiful spore prints. They're uh, just really lovely looking spore prints. Um, you can see the beautiful color and they've been just uh, dropping spores for about 24 hours now. And then we're going to take just a bit of our distilled water here and pour it onto our tray. Now once we have a bit, now we need a, a, enough to fill about two syringes worth, so I'm just going to pour enough down. That should be sufficient. And then we're just going to take our razor blade here. This allows me to just move my spores around and really scrape and clean them off. Uh, move them around. And up here to this spores. And then over 
here. And then that just lifts all of our spores off of the surface of the, the, the stainless steel tray here. We can move them around, make sure we're, we're gathering them up. They'll kind of settle on their own uh, into, a, into a, a working area. And then we're just going to take our syringe cap here. Oops. And go ahead and just vacuum them up. Uh, and and uh, as you can see, there's so many spores left on the tray. You have all of this spore material here. Uh, if we wanted to continue uh, with more disposable syringes, we could continue to uh, suck up more and more spores uh, until all of this material was used up. Uh, we probably would end up with, I don't know, 10 or 20 uh, more syringes just continuing this process. Uh, and that's all it takes. Uh, you can reuse these spores to re-inoculate your grain spawn uh, and really make it a full 360 process where from start to finish you can uh, take charge of that chain of custody and know that you were the person who gathered the spores, you were the person who inoculated the spores and ultimately grow the mushrooms. And so uh, it's nice to be able to take control of that chain of custody. Uh, but that's all it takes and um, we'll see you next time guys.